Hi, I'm Mike, founder of GoodBed.com. Now, if you've been on planet Earth any time in the last five years, you've probably heard of the mattress brand Casper. They started with one perfect mattress for everyone, but what you may not know is that they've now got more of a complete collection of mattresses. Today, we're gonna take you through the full lineup, help you understand what features they all have in common, as well as what features they add as you step up through the line. We're excited to show it to you, stick around. So in total, the Core Casper collection consists of what we would think of as six different models. Now the company kind of thinks of it as three different models, the original, Nova, and the Wave. We, because both of those, uh, all three of those come in two different varieties each, we think of it as more like six unique models. The original comes in its original form, which was an all foam mattress design. And then it also has a hybrid uh, counterpart. The Nova and Wave both have the hybrid version as well as the hybrid with the snow cooling technology. So essentially you've got six total options to choose from in this collection. Now we'll cover the distinctions between all those models as we go through this video, but at a high level, this is a lineup that starts at about 1095 in a queen size and goes up to about 3195 in a queen size. And that, uh, those prices would be before any good bed discounts are applied. Now, in terms of the features that all Casper mattresses have in common, I want to touch on three general themes that Casper really tries to incorporate into each of its mattresses, alignment, temperature, and feel. So in terms of alignment, that's about keeping your spine in proper neutral alignment while you're on the mattress. And Casper uh, addresses this through the use of zoning characteristics and features in each of its models. Now, one thing that's unique, and we'll talk about these more specifically as we go through the line, but one thing that's unique in how Casper approaches zoning is that none of the zoning is, is in the support core of the mattress. So in a lot of cases, you hear the term zoning and it has to do with coil configurations or nesting in the center third, something having to do with uh, firmer coils in different sections of the mattress. In Casper's case, it's accomplished above that layer of the mattress, more in the kind of middle part of the mattress. So we'll talk to you more about each of the zoning techniques used in each of the models as we go through this. Uh, temperature is something that is uh, important to Casper. So each of the mattresses has uh, some airflow characteristics that they uh, have tried to introduce in order to help moderate temperature, as well as some more advanced cooling characteristics as you move up through the line. Uh, and then the third thing is feel, and that really is about kind of a, achieving a sort of what they call the signature Casper feel, which I would describe as sort of a, a soft layer of t foam on top with memory foam underneath. That has become kind of the signature Casper feel. And then within that broad uh, construct, they've been able to achieve some, some a variety of, of feels within that, you know, different amounts of bounce, different amounts of cushioning depth, and even different amounts of softness, but they all have that sort of shared common thread of that, that signature Casper feel, soft foam over a layer of memory foam. A few other things you ought to know that all of these Casper mattresses have in common. Let's start with the cover. The covers are made with what they call a slub yarn, which is uh, kind of an imperfect yarn, intentionally imperfect. Uh, the girth undulates in size, uh, and as a result, the resulting fabric is a little softer, a little bit more voluminous. Uh, in addition, all of these covers are using 50% recycled material, which essentially means plastic water bottles are being repurposed to help make these covers. As far as the foams go, the foams are all proprietary to Casper in this current lineup. Uh, that means that they developed or co-developed these foams specifically for use in these Casper mattresses. And in doing so, they're very focused on airflow. That's something that they test all of their foams for is how much air can flow through these foams. And that's obviously uh, uh, related to their emphasis on temperature and cooling. Uh, as far as the support cores go, all of the support cores in the Casper mattresses are seven inches tall, whether they're foam or springs. The only foam one, of course, is the original foam mattress. The others all use the same seven inch pocketed coil support unit with about 700 coils. Uh, it's not a zoned unit, it's just a 700 coil pocketed coil unit with a foam encasement rail going around the edge for edge support. Now, in terms of uh, adjustable base compatibility, all the Casper mattresses are gonna be adjustable base compatible. You shouldn't have any problems using them on an adjustable base. They're designed for that, in fact. Uh, and on top of that, they all use the same warranty. It's a 10-year manufacturer's warranty. 
So now let's get into some of the specifics of these actual models in this Casper collection, starting with the original, the original foam and the original hybrid, which is the one I'm on right now. Uh, both of these are an 11 inch total construction, starting with, uh, this is right, what I'm showing here is the original foam construction, of course. Uh, in that case, it starts with a seven inch support core, uh, just a you know typical polyurethane firm support core. Uh, then you've got a two inch layer of memory foam, in this case, it's a pretty soft memory foam, um, but then you've got uh, a layer of soft polyurethane foam above that. And it's important to note, as I mentioned, um, a couple of features that, that Casper incorporates into all of their models is spinal alignment accomplished through some sort of zoning, as well as temperature regulation, oftentimes accomplished through some sort of airflow. Uh, in the case of the original models, the spinal alignment zoning is is in this memory foam layer what you can see here just is just obviously illustrative but uh, what this memory foam layer is cut so that in the center third of the mattress you have a, a, it's still memory foam but it's a denser and firmer formulation of memory foam than what you have in the head and foot of the mattress as far as the airflow goes uh, this is what they call airscape so Airscape refers to these pin core holes that are drilled into the foam. Now, in the case of both the Casper, uh, the original foam and the original hybrid, the pin core holes are drilled through this top layer, this inch and a half or so of soft polyurethane foam at the top of the mattress. And that just is to add, a, again, a little bit more airflow at the top. Now, in terms of how these two models differ, obviously the key difference is in the support core. One has the all foam construction with this type of uh, foam block support core. The other, the one I'm on right now, uses a support core like this. Ignore this top part because this is a different model, but the support core, as I mentioned, is the same in all the hybrid uh, Casper mattresses. So this is what the support core of the original hybrid looks like. It's got a six inch pocketed coil with a one inch base layer of foam just to kind of give those coils something to rest on. And again, as I mentioned, it's a 700 coil design uh, with a foam perimeter uh, for edge support. Now, the only other distinction between these two models is the cover. The cover on the hybrid version of the original is a little bit lighter gray than the cover on the uh, foam version, but that is purely an aesthetic difference just to kind of be able to tell the two apart. Really fundamentally, the, the foam layers are exactly the same on top. It's the, the construction difference is only in the bottom seven inches of the mattress. Now, in terms of the feels, one thing that's kind of interesting is that that has resulted in a very consistent feel between the two of them. I would say that the original, sorry, the hybrid version maybe has slightly deeper cushioning depth, like a little bit more of that hugged or cradled feel, but remarkably similar. Both of them I would put at kind of a medium firm. I'd probably classify them as medium firm, but they're darn close to medium. Um, and, and they're very, very close to each other. And if anything, the hybrid maybe has just a little bit more softness, a little bit more sink. Just those coils just seem to have a little bit more give when you, uh, and more point elasticity, the ability to kind of just bend or, or get into the mattress a little bit deeper, but it, it's subtle. And overall, it's more about uh, just do you want kind of a, a quicker response bounce that a coil would offer or more kind of the stability and lack of bounce that the all foam construction would offer. And the only other thing I would add is as it relates to the memory feel, both of these mattresses do have memory foam, but it tends to be a rather quick responding memory foam. So uh, in both cases, you're talking about, um, it's, it's not gonna have a lot of that ooey gooey feel. There's two inches of it. It's just kind of enough to give you a little bit more conformance uh, and pressure relief, but it's not gonna give you a lot of that memory feel if that's what you're after, uh, nor is it going to give you that kind of stuck in the mud feeling if that's what maybe concerns you. All right, so now we've moved up to the Nova Hybrid. Now this is a 12 inch model, so we've added an inch from what you had in both the original and the original hybrid. And what you see that is that that actually pushes the memory foam a little further down into the mattress. That's one of the key distinctions in terms of the feel you'll find. Uh, you still have a, a layer of what I would describe as a, a very soft poly foam up on the, on the tippy top of the mattress. Uh, below that though, they now insert an additional layer, about an inch and a half of transition foam before you get to the memory foam. Uh, and in this case, it's this transition layer that has the cut zoning. So a third of the mattress in this particular layer 
uh, is a, a firmer, denser version of the same type of foam uh, than what you find in the head and foot of the mattress. Uh, and then below that, you have a two inch layer of memory foam. Now, in this case, there's a second zoning element here. It's not just the cut zoning in this particular layer. It's an, additionally, it's some convolution in the top of the memory foam layer. This particular cutout doesn't fully demonstrate what that looks like. What it actually looks like is in the, uh, you have the cut area here, which is the firmer, denser foam would be in between my hands. Then you have a, an area here where there is convolution at the top of the memory foam here to allow a little bit more sinkage for your pointier parts. Uh, but overall, this whole third section here is providing more support for the heaviest part of your body, that middle part of your body. But the very pointiest part, hips, for example, uh, can sink a little further in on account of that uh, convolution egg crate type stuff in the top of the memory foam layer in this very middle of that, of that center third. Then there's additional convolution over here and over here in that same memory foam layer, which again allows for a little bit more uh, sinkage in the pointiest part, the other pointy part, which is your shoulders. Um, so that is all designed to afford more spinal alignment while you're on the mattress. So it said, they call it five zones. Technically, I think it's seven because you also have a zone here at the very, very end that, um, that is a little different than what you have underneath your shoulders. But nonetheless, it's, uh, it's a multi-zoned approach here to try to achieve more spinal alignment. Now I'm gonna come back and bring this here. So uh, that's your memory foam layer. We also would add that the memory feel on this is a little bit more pronounced. This is a little bit slower responding uh, memory foam than what we saw in the, used in the original models. And then below that, of course, you have your same pocketed coil support unit that you had in the original hybrid. Um, in terms of the feel, uh, this is gonna be probably the softest model in the collection, the, the Nova model, uh, because uh, we, we would characterize this as maybe a medium soft on our softness spectrum. It's still kind of in the range of that like middle of the spectrum, but certainly noticeably softer than what you have with the original. Um, and you're gonna get uh, commensurately deeper cushioning uh, and more sinkage, more of that hugged or cradled sensation uh, that goes along with that. And then the last thing I'll add is that, as I mentioned, every one of these Casper mattresses has what they call this airscape technology. It's these pin core holes. Well, on the Nova model, they actually drill those holes uh, through the top two layers of the mattress. So it's essentially the top uh, two and a half inches of the mattress. And they do this after they've already kind of glued these layers together. So the holes definitely are designed to line up, allowing that airflow to travel a little bit further away from your body. Okay, so now we've moved up to the Wave Hybrid, which is the top model in this Casper collection. Uh, and this is a layer that you can see now has five layers. Now, of course, I'm using a, a cutout demonstration that has a foam core, but of course, uh, the co actual core of the Wave Hybrid would be the same pocketed coil unit that we've shown you in the previous models. Uh, but above that, these are going to be the four layers of comfort and support materials uh, that you find in the Wave Hybrid. Uh, let's start at the top. You have a one inch layer of, again, a soft poly foam. It's not quite as soft as the poly foam used in the Nova, but I would say it's closer to the softness of the, the top layer of the Nova than it is to the top layer of the original. Uh, below that, you've got an inch and a half of latex. So instead of essentially that, that uh, cut zoning transition layer that we showed you above the memory foam in the Nova, you have instead a latex layer that definitely offers the distinctive kind of buoyancy and pushback that, that latex provides. And when I say pushback, I mean more in a supportive sense than in any kind of like a pressure inducing sense. It's a great mattress material here. So uh, that's what you have in this second layer is an inch and a half of latex. It also, by the way, has a certain springiness to it, which you'll, which you'll notice the wave, the surface of the wave probably has the most surface bounce of the mattresses in the Casper collection. Then below that, you do have your layer of memory foam. Again, it, this is, in this case, it's about an inch and a half. Um, this is the layer where you do have cut zoning in the wave, uh, the wave model. So again, in the, the center third of the mattress, you're gonna have this denser, slightly firmer memory foam used instead of uh, the, the le slightly less dense and less firm 
uh, memory foam that's used in the head and foot. But again, that's not the only aspect of zoning that this mattress incorporates. They've got zoning in the layer below that too, which is a transition layer, another inch and a half layer. Uh, this layer is pretty firm foam. It's not as firm as what you'd find in a support core, like the one shown here, but it is, it's a pretty firm layer of foam, certainly much firmer than the memory foam above it or even the latex uh, above that. And what's unique about this transition layer is that it has these little kind of almost like you went around with an ice cream scoop and you just scooped out little circles uh, in the foam. And that again is just, it's done in a strategic way uh, in the mattress to afford different amounts of uh, sinkage and therefore conformance and therefore spinal alignment in different sections of the mattress. Now, on top of that, what they've done is in two key uh, channels of the mattress, they've filled these with a, a very firm, uh, solid gel. And so the purpose of this is that this, the two rows of these things that run just on either side of your posterior um, are gonna be filled with this firm, solid gel. And what that is, is designed to do is essentially provide a little bit more support underneath that lumbar area of your back and allow a little bit more sinkage in your pointy part, which is, which is your butt. Um, so that's, that's the purpose. And obviously it's designed, all these features are designed to be, to work equally well, whether you've uh, rotated the mattress head to toe as you're supposed to do periodically. So that's why they have it on both sides so that, because what's under here, when you flip the mattress will be under your lumbar. So you definitely do notice a little bit more firmness in that lumbar area as a result of this, um, this gel that they put in there. So that is the zoning aspect of the Wave mattress. And in terms of the cooling features, they also do have, air, this demo doesn't show it, but they do have the, the airscape uh, perforations, the pin core holes going through, not just the top layer, but they have them actually going through the top three layers of the mattress. So it includes the, this soft polyfoam, the latex, and this memory foam. And again, they do it after the mattress is all, after these layers are all glued together to make sure that those holes line up and the air can travel away from your body. And on top of that, they also have a layer of phase change material on top of this, this very top layer of foam. So that just adds a little bit more cooling feature to the Wave Hybrid. Now, in terms of the feel, the Wave Hybrid is gonna have a little bit of an in-between feel, in between the original and the Nova. So I would say that the Wave Hybrid is closer in feel to the original though. I'd probably call it a medium. If you remember, I said the original was a medium firm, but it's really close to, to medium. This would be like a medium, but, but close to medium firm. It falls in between in terms of medium firm for the original, medium for the Wave, uh, and then medium soft for the Nova. And in terms of the other feel aspects, uh, you are gonna get uh, a little bit slower responding memory feel, like more like the Nova. But again, on uh, both the Nova and the Wave, it's going to be not so much, there's not enough memory foam to give you that really stuck in the mud feel. It's just, just a little bit uh, slower responding uh, than, the, than the original. Uh, so you get kind of just a, a smidge of that memory feel. And then you also get, uh, certainly you get some, some deep bounce uh, from the coils, and you also get, as I mentioned, a, a little bit more surface bounce on the Wave Hybrid because of this, this uh, springiness of this latex layer, which is up close to the surface of the mattress. In terms of cushioning depth, this one, again, it's sort of in between the original and the Nova. It's not quite as hugged or cradled as the Nova, but I think you do get a little bit more of that hugged or cradled sensation than you do on the original. All right, now let's talk about the last two models, both of which are unique for their use of what Casper calls snow technology. That would be the Nova Hybrid Snow and the Wave Hybrid Snow. Uh, now, both of these models are exactly the same as their uh, counterparts, the non-snow counterparts, but for the addition of three features. And the three features that are added to each of these two models are added in an identical fashion. So we're gonna cover them together. Uh, essentially, the three features in combination are what Casper calls snow technology. Those features being, number one, the, uh, the use of phase change material in 
the cover fabric. Now this is not uh, sprayed onto the cover. This is fibers that are infused with phase change material that are used uh, to create this fabric. Um, and so that is what they call quick cool technology. Um, and, and so essentially that's, it, it just gives you a little bit more coolness to the touch in this fabric layer. But right below the cover, you have this uh, top layer of, uh, of foam. And we showed you that the non-snow version does have some phase change material on there. Well, in the snow models, it's a thicker layer of this same uh, phase change material applied to the top of the foam to give you even more uh, uh, of that coolness to the touch and even more uh, like a, a longer lasting. Think of it as, you know, more, more minutes of cool feeling before uh, this phase change material is kind of has absorbed your initial body heat when you lay down on the mattress. Um, so those are the first two elements. The third is the most unique and I think the most interesting and exciting. It's what they call heat delete. Now it uses graphite. And we've actually shown you in another video that we'll link to here, a great demonstration of the conductive powers of graphite. Graphite is a very effective conductor of heat. Um, and we showed this in another demo where, where the heat travels away, uh, basically from your fingers into the graphite, and then it allows the graphite to melt ice very easily uh, in a way that would not work with other materials held between your finger trying to cut ice with it. Um, so graphite helps heat travel very effectively. They not only took advantage of graphite's natural characteristics, they actually used uh, a, a lab created graphite that is specifically oriented. They call it super oriented so that the, the, the sort of at the molecular level, it's like a highway for, for electricity and heat to travel. Uh, and so essentially all, everything is lined up for things to be moving this way, longitudinally through a strip of graphite. And they've essentially applied six of these strips, bands, if you will, to the mattress, going horizontally across the mattress. They're applied in between these top two layers of foam. It's very thin, not anything you can feel. We're talking about the thickness of a sheet of paper. And we're talking about three inch bands uh, spaced, you know, five inches apart, let's say. I'm not sure if that's exactly accurate, but they're running essentially through the middle half of the mattress, which is obviously where you're dispelling most of your heat. You're not having a lot of heat coming out of uh, the, the extremities. It's more coming out of the middle of your body. And so these, these six bands run through that section of the mattress horizontally. And in essence, as the heat travels down an inch into the mattress and hits those bands, it's like a highway for heat to travel away from your body because it's naturally going to uh, travel through this conductive material to an area that, where there is less heat, right? The heat, the, the area under your body is gonna be the most hot and anything not under your body is gonna have less heat and that's therefore gonna be drawing heat away from you. So that's a really interesting concept and what's maybe even more interesting about it is that Casper being now a public company they have to go to further lengths to actually prove claims that they make. And so they've done testing to, to demonstrate that, and they compared in, this, in these tests, uh, two Casper models, one with snow, one without, but otherwise identical. Uh, and they were able to demonstrate that when you put heat sensors, you know, one inch down underneath the heat source, one inch down into the mattress, you put a heat sensor, and then you apply a heat source on top of it, they're able to, to, to use those temperature sensors to determine that in the uh, models with these heat delete bands going through them, as well as the other elements of snow technology, the overall temperature of those sensors kind of finds a resting place that's about five or six degrees cooler and just holds that resting place over a 12 hour period that they measured this. So I found that to be pretty interesting uh, and, and so I, that, that's a, that's a technology we haven't seen before. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty cool and in, in, no pun intended, pretty cool way to, uh, to help draw heat away from your body during the night and, and sustain that cooling capability throughout the night. So there you have it. That's Casper's complete mattress collection. Now I want to mention they do have another mattress you may see online. Uh, on some websites, it's called The Element. We did cover that in a separate review. For more helpful information about how to choose the right mattress for you, 
go to goodbed.com. You'll find information, including the written version of this review, which will have things like prices, as well as discounts that may be available right now and can save you some money. You'll also find obviously reviews and videos about other products and the Good Bed Quiz, which we fundamentally believe is the best starting point for any mattress shopper, hands down. It will take a very detailed assessment of all of your needs, preferences, and priorities, and then show you options both online and in your local stores that we think are a good match for you. So that's all. Thanks for watching, and we hope you sleep well.